Hello, everyone. It's uh, great to be here. It's my first time uh, speaking. And uh, yeah, I, I'm not a Kegel master. I, I'm actually not even a data science scientist as my background. I, I'm a software developer, uh, specifically a web application software developer. So that's my background. However, uh, I, I have taken a data science boot camp. You know, I can get into data and kind of, uh, uh, you know, get my hands dirty. And, you know, I do a kind of basic level analysis, but we do have a data science team. So the, the, I have to give all the credit to my team in terms of anything we have uh, built so far. Uh, they've, they've been really great. Um, so this is a pretty high level overview of kind of the, the challenges we're, we're trying to solve in the industry we're in. And uh, essentially where we're going next and, and a few of the techniques from a high level perspective of what we're using to solve some of the problems. So yeah, my company is Accuspire. Our com uh, company's mission is a future without job search. Uh, so it's pretty exciting. Uh, we're, we're kind of the first in the world with this kind of a clarity of a mission in, in terms of just eliminating job search as a human task. So uh, it, I don't think it was even possible for this to happen until the most recent years with advances in, in AI and machine learning. So um, I'm gonna do something for the first time tonight uh, because we have such a large crowd, which is uh, we have a large enough sample size where you can do kind of an interesting live poll. So I, I would like to know, um, you can just raise your hand uh, as an answer to any of these questions. Um, first of all, uh, if, if you uh, have applied for a job in the past, um, you know, have you actually received a response within a one month period. And you, you can't have been referred to the job, you can't have been recruited directly. Uh, you have to have applied to your job board or th through the company website or emailed it. Uh, how many of you actually received a response within one month? Okay, so probably about 40 to 50%. Uh, how many people have received a response within two weeks? a little bit less, maybe about a third. And how many people received the response within one week? So maybe about a little less than that, like 10, 15%. And how many people received a response within one day? Okay, very small. Uh, how about one hour? Nobody, I think. So that's the opportunity window we're chasing. And uh, you know, essentially uh, close that, that gap. And you know, we still have anywhere, depending on the crowd, uh, you're probably very tech savvy, you get a higher response rate to applications than people in most industries. Approximately 75% of people never receive a response to a job application. It, it's a pretty uh, uh, miserable experience actually for a lot of people to send application after application. So uh, an example of what inspired Accuspire to be created is uh, my wife was laid off uh, from her position in oil and gas. She was at a geosciences company that suffered really uh, badly during the recession. And uh, so she was let go November 2015. And her company went uh, in the following months from 100 staff down to about 12. So, you know, the odds are kind of against you when it's an 88% reduction in your company. And a lot of other companies in Calgary went through dramatic reductions as well in their staff. So there were a lot of good people on the market. Uh, so, you know, she was applying, uh, searching and applying for uh, dozens to hundreds of jobs and actually never uh, received a single response. Now, myself, uh, I was a consultant at the time. And as a consultant, you're always kind of searching and applying for positions, uh, always looking for opportunities. And uh, I found uh, quite often I had a similar experience as she did. Uh, so, Approximately uh, three days before my large, largest contract ended, I woke up at 5.30 in the morning and wrote the first line of code of Accuspire. And uh, you know, that got the ball rolling. So we raised some angel funding uh, toward the end of 2016 and we've been going at this for about uh, 18 months. So I'll kind of dive in here and talk about the problem we're solving and uh, where we're going. So I wanted to look at the data. So what's going on in Calgary? We have 8.2% unemployment. Uh, and then, this only counts people on EI, so not sure how many people knew that, but it actually excludes contract workers such as myself, uh, as I was, and EI uh, expired people, so people that are no longer receiving EI. So this number was actually far higher uh, based on my anecdotal research of, of people I surveyed. Uh, so the job seeker on average, uh, we found from our research, uh, 
was searching 100 hours per month, uh, searching and applying for jobs. So an incredible amount of time. And this was kind of the, the feeling after that. You know, very miserable, depressed, um, not very motivated. Uh, they're not seeing any success. They're just data processing at the end of the day. So they're searching and they're searching. They're reading through job descriptions. If the job description is a good fit correlating to the criteria on the resume, they apply. Uh, and they do this over and over all day long. And they go on job board after job board, employer website after employer website, uh, doing this, then rewriting their cover letter, tweaking the resume, et cetera. So I wanted to know, is there actually a shortage of jobs in Calgary? Or is there enough jobs to actually re-employ everybody that lost their job? I, I thought that would be kind of an in interesting thing. And if there's not enough jobs immediately to re-employ everybody, maybe there would be enough over a certain period. So how long would that period be to re-employ everybody that was unemployed? So we actually found at any given point, there's at least a minimum of 11,000 job openings in Calgary, uh, just off the major job boards. We were only looking at Kijiji, Indeed, and a few other uh, larger job boards. We just ignored all the small ones. Uh, we found that uh, Indeed aggregates Canada Job Bank as well as all the major employer websites anyway. Uh, so we just focused on that. And so we figured this number could be a little higher, but it had the majority of the data. So this is as of June 2018. Uh, what we have for Calgary. So we started looking at the most popular job roles in Calgary. So uh, we wanted to really clearly understand where the opportunities were. So you can see there, we just did a bubble chart. This is a basic Tableau thing. Uh, most of it was sales and customer care. You can see manufacturing, production, construction, logistics, software development, so all the Solium people and software, that, that's your jobs in there. Um, restaurant, food services, retail, et cetera. Um, then we wanted to actually uh, bucket everything by hard skills. So we actually took all the data, we did a lot of data mining, and we pulled out all the hard skills from every job that had been created uh, over a one year period. So we, we, uh, we decided to bucket these by, I, I believe this is by, this is kind of by role type. Uh, yeah, so job skills by role, um, so whatever role you're working in. So we had uh, software development and IT is the red bucket. So you can see tech skills are actually huge. Uh, it doesn't matter the industry or the role type. Uh, tech skills are, um, are, are actually very much in demand. This is, these buckets are sized by the total volume of jobs requiring that skill. So you know, we had client services, uh, application design, enterprise software, uh, data processing, JavaScript, stuff like that. Uh, and then this is finance here. We have engineering, which is very common in Calgary, healthcare, et cetera. This is just a very rough kind of skim through. Uh, we've done a lot of more advanced uh, data processing just in the past few weeks, but this was just a rough and dirty kind of first skim. So quite interesting. Uh, then we looked at the hottest degrees. So we found all those engineers that lost their jobs. There's still a lot of engineering demand in Calgary. So engineering, business, science, uh, information technology, et cetera. So it's quite interesting. And then uh, we ran some uh, Python scripts to basically uh, create um, some uh, skill groupings by, uh, you know, so, sort of a common skill and role overlaps. So you can see we, we had things that automatically kind of came together that were, you know, photography, arts, music, design, et cetera, uh, leisure, travel and tourism, museums. Uh, over here we have like writing and editing. So all of the things requiring, all the jobs requiring uh, very similar skill clusters, uh, they ended up getting pulled together. So that kind of helped visualize where everything was laid out. So we actually have a very large part, it's like poster size that has like uh, the map of all of Calgary. It's pretty neat to look at. So I wanted to find out, is there actually a talent shortage um, or is the talent uh, just not getting through because Interesting thing is uh, all these positions were being posted, but some of them were being posted and left open for two to three months. So, you know, when you have a position open for two to three months, you're kind of wondering, like, did they just forget to delete it? Uh, so I, I uh, contacted a few employers and I said, you know, give me some time, like an hour, I'll, I'll sit down and talk with you about the opportunities you have posted and let's see uh, how your success is so far in, in uh, actually finding qualified people in Calgary. 
And quite often they said, oh, we, we haven't been able to find anyone qualified. And I was really surprised. I said, you know, how is it possible out of, say, 90,000 people unemployed, you're unable to find someone that's qualified? And they said, we just can't. Uh, they don't exist. So we kind of saw that as a challenge. So we said, give us your hardest role and, and we'll find someone. So the first one they gave us uh, had been open for about six weeks, couldn't find anyone, found someone the same day. Uh, we tried another uh, and then another and another. So we placed like advanced UI UX designers, software developers, uh, solution architects, uh, blockchain developer most recently. Um, so yeah, they, they said there was a talent shortage despite there being a lot of unemployed people. Uh, you know, we believe the talent is actually not getting through. So we, we actually came to the conclusion that there's some market inefficiencies, that there's people actually unemployed with very valuable skill sets, and they're just getting lost in the stack, um, or they're not able to apply to enough positions to increase their chances to the maximum. So they're not being in the right place at the right time uh, to get the best opportunity for them. So this is kind of a visualization of uh, the job seekers experience in the market right now. So if, if you're just an individual, you know, uh, searching by hand um, on a little search bar, two to three keywords at a time, you, you're facing this kind of onslaught of opportunities and you're probably gonna miss 95% of the potential opportunities. Um, so the average person can probably read, you know, a certain amount per day, you're gonna miss a lot. So we actually found, uh, we did some surveys of job seekers and we found out there's a lot of pain points and majority of the problems faced in job search were caused by recruiters and employers. So there's like a bit of a bottleneck there, especially with the recession making it worse. Employers actually said they were getting 1,000 to 1,500 applicants if they were a larger corporation. So it was a, you know, a, a huge challenge. And we kind of sympathize with that. We're like, okay, well, yeah, that's a lot of data to sift through. But uh, yeah, companies said they cannot find skilled workers fast enough to two, three month open positions. Uh, so we asked them, you know, what do you think if we can auto detect the qualifications? And they said, okay, that's, that would be interesting, but you know, the software we have already does that. And we said, okay, what does it do? And they like, you know, some basic keyword searching and that sort of thing, but pretty rudimentary like knockout search type stuff. Um, so we were thinking, what if we could kind of go to the next level? And then also, can we actually respond to everybody if they have enough of the right qualifications? Like, can we actually invite someone for an interview automatically or, or say, you know, uh, you're missing a few criteria. Can we do a little quick follow-up instantly just to clarify a few details? Um, and then also, can we hire more quickly? Can we shorten that window from, you know, weeks to months down to, you know, minutes. So as soon as you submit your application, you already got a response back by email and or text message, and you can start following up right there. So really, uh, we were wondering, can the complex kind of process, you know, very time consuming process actually be made into a very simple user experience? So, you know, your typical Apple product is very simple. That's kind of our vision. Uh, and can we kind of sit in the middle of all these existing processes and just make them work more efficiently? So you have your job boards, they're not really going anywhere. You have all the job seekers searching on the job boards. You've got the recruiters. Um, they're, they're working as their own firm, you know, for the employers. Uh, and then the employers are, you know, working with all of these parties. And we figured we could just kind of sit in the middle and make everything work more efficiently. So essentially we came up with uh, the vision for just automated recruiting, screening, and engagement for employers, uh, but also uh, you know, a, a job seeker service that will search on your behalf. So we figured we could improve the quality of results and reduce human effort. Uh, reducing human effort in the process is really uh, you, you know, the, the, the biggest opportunity uh, you know, with all the technology we have. But it's a very steep challenge. So we have hundreds of thousands of unique skills and tools uh, that exist. Uh, so LinkedIn, they said so far they have 50,000, but we actually discovered 50,000 is too low. Uh, you know, if you get into every possible, you know, software program, every possible programming language, uh, engineering tools, et cetera, the list gets really big really quickly. 
Um, we also found uh, resumes are mostly inconsistent. There are many different structures and formats. Uh, they're usually a PDF or a Word document to start with. Uh, so lots of challenges there. Um, job descriptions are all inconsistent. It's all unstructured text. Uh, companies write you know, a big wall of text about their company and then a few details underneath. Uh, we found 46% of job titles are actually unique. So that's a big challenge is uh, you know, how do you understand uh, what's what um, if it's a unique title that didn't come up before. So we, we see like you know, manager of success or things like that as a job title. What does that mean? So we also found a big challenge is supply demand imbalances in the market. So if we were even, even successful at executing everything perfectly and built the, the world's best AI machine learning platform, it could still fail if there was too big of a market imbalance between the supply and demand. Uh, and maybe not fail completely, but you know, it, it wouldn't reach uh, the, the, the ultimate vision of, of giving everyone a job within a very quick time frame. So this is something that the government's trying to fix right now. Uh, so Calgary Economic Development, et cetera. So hopefully that will go away. Um, so I'm not sure how, how many people in the room are developers. Uh, We've got a few, so uh, I'm not sure if you've ever had the experience of, you know, uh, people contacting you for a position and it's uh, the wrong criteria. Uh, so this is a, a funny thing I, I, I like to put up once in a while. Uh, you know, uh, I, I used to have JavaScript on my. This right. guy's like, I typically ask recruiters to point out which of these are Pokemon. So, um, so we were looking at the hard skills and actually seeing can we actually do the hard skills better than a, a recruiter that would mix up certain skill clusters. Because it's a, it's a common human error. If you're not a developer, you, you don't know what these things mean. Like I don't know uh, if I'm a recruiter, I don't know what pandas or scikit is, but a data science scientist would know that. So our approach is uh, with a job seeker, we give them full control over all their data. So when you upload your resume, it converts it to an interactive web page. So, uh, we have this gigantic skill database. We have about 100,000 uh, unique skills. And uh, the first pass through, basically, uh, we try to identify everything that's a hard skill or tool on your resume. And that's, it's just highlighted. Uh, and then if it's incorrect, you can just trash it, or if you don't want that to be relevant. Uh, and if there's something we've missed, you can actually highlight it to add it into the data set. So it's kind of taking Google's approach, uh, what they did with reCAPTCHA to, um, enhance their, their data set through uh, you know, uh, human verified data. Um, we're actually doing a similar approach with actual resume skills. You know? So every time there's a new skill that comes up in the industry, uh, if it's on someone's resume uh, and they enter that, then we capture that and we save it. And if enough people actually also enter the same skill, then we're like, we're like okay, we should look at entering this into the master data set. So it's a very simple approach. Uh, it's working, it's interesting so far. So this is our success. So from November 2016 up till now, you can see like the growth of that data. And this is just the user entered data. So we have about, yeah, almost 13,000 new unique skills added into our system. And these are all uh, classified by industry and role taxonomy. So our users are actually really helping us. And then it makes our system more accurate. So um, behind the scenes, under the surface, uh, our approach is we're using um, some neural networks and latent semantic analysis. So essentially trying to search jobs and resumes like a real person uh, with that contextual information. And then uh, hard skills, roles, industries, and education. Uh, we just use a literal comparison only when it's important. So uh, if there's uh, you know, a, a hard cut filter needed on, on something, then we could still do that. And sometimes users are like, you know, I'd never want to work in certain industries or, or role types, so they can just take that out. So the interesting thing is we'll never have perfect results for everyone. So uh, I, I like the saying 80-20 is plenty. So if we have, uh, you know, good results for 80% of the people, uh, that, that's actually pretty good. Um, we're always going to have some people where it's just, they're throwing really bad data into the system. We see people upload like a three sentence resume or a bunch of misspelled information, or they upload a picture um, as a resume or, or a scanned, um, uh, an old scan of like a, a typewritten resume. <laughs> you, you wouldn't believe the kind of data that, that goes in. 
So you know, you know it's never going to be perfect for every, everyone. Uh, so that's kind of our approach. So our system is very simple. Three steps uh, at a high level. Uh, drag and drop your, your resume or job posting. Uh, confirm a few details that our system has guessed. So it, it'll, uh, using um, our existing machine learning, um, it'll try to guess the most appropriate industries, role types. It'll get all those hard skills, as I mentioned. Uh, a few other details. And then you just, uh, if it all looks good, you just confirm. You go click, click, click. And then you get results. Um, then you'll see uh, suggested opportunities. So it'll automatically say these are great opportunities that are a good fit for you based uh, in the Calgary area. And then essentially you can just uh, apply with, is, is a two-click process for a company in our system. Uh, if it's a company externally, uh, it just brings you out to their website. And uh, yeah, very simple process. Um, the next level, which I can actually show it to people if they're interested, is uh, your interactive uh, SMS screening where it, if the system finds an opportunity for you that we only do it for the first opportunity uh, in, in the list right now, but it'll say, do you want to see some more information? And you can just say yes. It'll go through a little um, message sequence. And we're actually planning to do some natural language processing within that as well. So based on the answers you provide, um, it'll, it'll provide sort of an enhanced uh, smart profile to the employer and provide a recommendation to shortlist you for an interview. And then if they say OK, then you get the opportunity there. So this is kind of how it looks. Um, so yeah, it just prompts you to apply to jobs you, you're qualified for. Uh, and then it just provides all the details, just keeping people engaged. Uh, so yeah, it'll just say you know, it matched 8 out of 10 skills. Uh, or you know, do you have experience with this hard skill or not, if it's, if it's missing off your resume. So yeah, love it or hate it, uh, I, I'd love to chat with people that are interested in kind of bringing this tech into their employer if they uh, you know, really think that, um, that their company should have a boost in, in bringing good talent in and doing it more efficiently, more quickly. Uh, that would be awesome. If you don't like your approach if, or if you have uh, you know, suggestions on improving things, uh, we're always uh, you know, changing our algorithm. We're always uh, writing code every day. Um, I'd love to hear any suggestions. Uh, you can email me, uh, steven at accuspire.com. Uh, we're also potentially looking for people to join our team in coming months. So if you have a uh, big love for data and solving really challenging problems, we've got some tough ones. So I'd love to hear from you. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, I'll take any questions if, if uh, people have any. Um,